When it comes to weight loss and fat loss, I think, you know, when we look at all the factors together, one of the most important ones is when we eat, so the timed eating. Of course, what we eat is hugely important as well. Um, but what I see um, a lot of times where there's issues with my patients is this kind of um, snacking between meals, eating all day, not having control over what you eat. And a lot of this, I mean, there are really psychological and emotional factors there as well. People, you know, we, we eat sometimes when we're sad, when we're stressed, we eat out of boredom. I mean, you know, all these things come in and having a schedule helps a lot with this because, you know, it gives you, gives you structure. Also then, if during those schedules you eat good meals that have a certain size that really fill you up, it's a lot easier to have this time, these three to four hours between meals. And I explain this a bit more in, in detail. Because the worst thing is if you get really hungry. That means you probably didn't have a good meal. Maybe you had like way too much carbs, so you get this kind of insulin spike and then it comes down and you get these cravings again. And that sets you up for a really, really, really bad day of eating, and especially in the afternoons. And I, talk about this all the time for most people, you know, the mornings are fine, you know, we get away with a very healthy breakfast, maybe even, you know, we have good intentions, we even have a decent amount of time between the first and the second meal, and then things fall apart. And part of that is because, you know, when we don't have a structure on when we eat, and we make the meals um, of poor quality, and, and too much carbs, then, you know, we get these uh, cravings that we can't control. So again, for, for all practical purposes, Timed eating takes away a lot of this guesswork throughout the day of, you know, like, hey, when should I have my meal? What should I not eat and whatever? So between meals, it's very important not to have food between meals. So really have um, a time between meals of three to four hours with no, with no calorie intake. Water is, of course, always okay. Uh, black coffee, tea, espresso, you know, all these uh, things are fine as long as there's no sugar in it, even no sweeteners. Sweeteners, I'm not big on them, especially artificial sweeteners. I, I'm okay with some uh, natural sweeteners like, you know, stevia, monk fruit, and allulose, but also only just in, just in moderation. But so for timed eating, I think the important thing is that we have to realize is when we wake up in the morning, and I keep talking about this in other videos as well, start out with a big glass of water, coffee, tea, espresso, any amount you like, but don't put anything in it yet, you know, to keep this really clean. And then three to four hours after waking up is the first meal. That's a very important one. And, you know, again, first meal, good amount of protein. This could even be the last, uh, sorry, the biggest meal of the day. It's actually very important because in the morning, you know, we actually, um, we will utilize that energy throughout the day. It's, it's good to start off with a, with a big, good, healthy breakfast. If you eat more carbs, if you're not on a keto diet, I think it's okay to eat a bit more carbs here in the morning rather than later in the day. That's my experience, my opinion. You can watch some other videos. People have different opinions about this. For me, I think this works the best because I mean, I like the last meal to be without carbs actually because it sets you up overnight for this fat burning window better, I believe. Anyway, so three to four hours in the morning um, after waking up, just water, espresso, tea. It's a great time to work out. And again, when we talk about scheduled uh, things we do during the day, working out, scheduling that early in the morning is actually fantastic. That's the time when we have, um, you know, maybe no, not so many commitments where we can schedule this in. And also kind of it's a time in the morning where you're deep in the fasted state where you get a lot out of your workout. So, okay, so three to four hours uh, after waking up, first meal, good composition, good protein, good fats, you know, and again, carbs are okay here in the terms, uh, you know, in terms of um, healthy carbs. So, you know, some oatmeal, for example, small amounts, um, some berries, that I think that's fine in the morning. I wouldn't go heavy on those later in the day. And then uh, three or four hours after that, no food, just hydrate, water, etc. Then uh, lunch, th three or four hours later again. So we have a second meal, three or four hours after the first meal. Um, same idea, good composition, good fats. And then after the second meal, three to four hours and then uh, with no food and then dinner. So this is a three meal schedule. Some people do a two meal schedule. I have personally not seen a lot of success with the one meal a day uh, schedule. Some people do that. Um, it's a bit tricky, I think, because you have this really long fasting window every day. And I think that might be counterproductive to your metabolic rate. Um, this is a generalization, of course. Now, I think the most important thing is, and when you watch different videos, you get different opinions. That's partially based on that people do have, um, you know, uh, work on different metabolic rates. And I think it's an oversimplification to say, everybody needs to have this schedule or that schedule. So there should be some flexibility in there, but the idea is still that you schedule it in, in a way that works for your body and that you don't snack between your meals and that you wait in the morning before you eat. I think those are general rules that we can apply to anyone. So wait three to four hours after wake up and then you should not have probably food three to four hours before you go to bed. 
that already gives you this kind of eight hour time frame doing which to eat. Now, if you do two meals in that time, I think that's fine. One meal again, I think is challenging for some people. Some people thrive on that. Um, but for the majority of people, somewhere between two to three scheduled meals a day seems to be ideal, at least in my experience and in my clinic. That's how people lose a lot of weight, lose a lot of fat, and they're not miserable at all. They, they feel good, you know, because they eat good, healthy meals, and then they have a, a time in between. So timed eating makes a huge difference, I think. Um, the other smaller, uh, you know, things I added down there that are important as well, of course, is the composition. Like I said before, keep the carbohydrates fairly low, between 50 to 80 grams a day. If you're ketogenic, it should only be about uh, less than 30 grams a day because you really want to be in that kind of fat burning um, window. And if you um, are eating more than 30 grams of carbohydrates a day when you're ketogenic, you know, the body will actually switch back to a carb metabolism. You're kind of in this miserable, uh, very low carb window. So that's not very healthy. And I think it's not, it doesn't make any sense. If you're keto, then really do it, do it right. Um, good fats, avocado oil, olive oil, butter, coconut oil, sounds like a broken record. But I think these are very important and you know we can um, add them into to our meals. Last meal of the day I always recommend no carbs at all. So I would have those carbs in my first and second meal really. Um, and then no processed foods and that's something that is um, time for another video. But uh, we see this a lot and uh, we just came back from a vacation in Europe and the food is a lot less processed. I mean they have a few different laws and you can get more unprocessed foods. So they kind of shied away from this massive GMO rollout and hyper processing of foods there. And, and so, you know, I think it is a lot uh, healthier, you know, it helps your metabolic rate to have less processed foods. So we just best we can. And, you know, we have great foods here. We can, we can pick and choose. Sometimes it's good to pick the more expensive, less processed foods and have less of them. Um, but again, this schedule helps tremendously. I think it's the most important thing in uh, fat loss and weight loss to be successful, to really schedule this and stick to the schedule. Also, it kind of frees up your day. You have, you know, two to three very rigid scheduled meals. Plan ahead, bring them with you, saves you money. Because the worst thing is, oh, I'm starving right now. Where am I going to go to eat right now? And then you go to a restaurant, you're going to have maybe very unhealthy foods and they use horrible oils in there, you know. It's expensive, so it's best to prepare them. So again, this I think is the most important point for fat loss. Timed eating, uh, it makes a huge difference. And in my practice, I see my patients having a huge success in, in, in losing body fat that way.